Hey guys and welcome to a new video. So today is another uh, talking about random stuff video. Um, and this one is another one about achievement diaries. So today there was a dev blog about the um, achievement diaries and it's basically just a change log of, of things that they've uh, altered about the rewards. Um, much of which I'm very very happy about. So I'm just going to quickly go over some of that stuff with you guys. First off I'd like to somewhat apologize I guess for the last video that I made about achievement diaries. It got a lot more dislikes than most of my videos get tend to get. And um, I was trying to figure out exactly why. It may have just been because my opinions weren't necessarily the most popular with a lot of people. It may have also been that I came on a little bit strong with some of them. Um, so I apologize if anyone felt that I uh, spoke incorrectly or made incorrect uh, judgments or just that video was inappropriate or something. I don't really know exactly. But yeah, that I still pretty much agree with most of the things that I said in that video, but I could have been a little bit more informed on a couple of things. Um, and most of the things that I was really concerned about have been changed anyways, so I'm pretty happy overall with how the achievement diaries are looking. I was happy anyways, there's just a couple things that I was a little bit concerned about, but I think it's going to be awesome and everything's looking really good. So I'm just going to go through some of the, the major things that have been changed about the rewards since the last time that we saw them. So first, uh, first thing I want to start off with is um, Motherload Mine. The 20% increased XP to pay dirt has been changed to 20% increased to getting higher like a higher chance of getting better ores, um, which I actually suggested to John C. I don't know if he got that idea from me or from somebody else because I'm sure lots of people thought of that, but I tweeted at him, um, it was a few days ago, asking whether that would be a possibility to change it to increased chance of getting better ores rather than increased XP rate, which I think is a really good solution because um, I don't think Mother Load should be any faster XP, but I mean, better profit I don't think would be that big of an issue. Um, bringing better ores into the game isn't really too big of a problem because they're useful for higher level smithing and everything like that. Um, and they fetch a good price no matter what, really. Um, so that's been changed, and Mother Load is not going to be 55k an hour like it would have been if that was not changed, which would have been kind of OP. Um, so I'm really glad about that, and I think that's probably the most significant thing to me that's been changed. Of course, XP lamps are still the same, and as far as XP lamps, the only thing that I find a problem with xp lamps is the fact that you can mess up crystal math labs records but there probably will be a way to just filter out those anyways because i mean you can clearly tell if somebody use xp lamps if they get like a, just a ridiculous record that clearly wouldn't be possible and those can just be kind of filtered out um they can still be left as the actual record but then hopefully there will be a filter added to just get rid of lamps records so you can see the actual records for people that didn't use lamps um, it'll be somewhat hard to tell, but I don't think it'll be that big a problem. I wasn't really too worried about the XP itself. Uh, maybe a little bit OP for some slow skills, but not a huge deal. But just the records I was a little worried about. But it's fine. You know, it's it's part of the game. I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. And it's not like I really do do records myself anyways. So um, I don't have too much to worry about personally. <laughs> so what's been changed? Um, they moved the two Lunar Spells from Elite to... Um, hard reward, so that means a lot more people will be able to use the Tan Hide spell and the Recharge D-Stone spell. And they also specified what runes they use, so Tan Hide uses 2 Astral, 2 Nature, and 5 um, Fire Runes, and it tans 5 uh, Hides. So, it's, I'm not exactly sure how that would work out as far as profit and everything. Hopefully it'll be good for XP, and hopefully it'll be good for profit as well. Uh, but 2 Nature Runes at, you know, like 230 each, that's, you know, f 460 GP. Two Astrals are like 80 to 100, so it'll be somewhere around 200 GP for that. So you're looking at around 600 to 700 GP per tan hide spell, and it'll turn five uh, hides into five leathers. Um, actually, I'm going to pause the recording quickly and check what kind of profit you might be able to make if you were able to do that. So if you were to do it on green dragon leathers, those are the ones that I just checked right now, um, you'd profit 180 GP per... Um, leather at this point if you spent 600 GP per spell and um, you made five uh, hides into leathers so that would be 900 GP profit per spell which is uh, pretty significant so that can end up being a very good money maker actually um, and a decent way to get magic XP as well I would probably assume so that would be probably really nice to see um, and it'll use up a lot of nature runes which will be really good because it'll keep the nature rune price at a good at a good uh, amount which will be really good for rune crafters also. So overall, really good effect. And the Recharge D Stone spell uses two Astral, two Soul Rune, and ten Water Runes. So that'll bring a use for Soul Runes again, which is really good because Soul Runes are kind of useless. Um, so that'll be good to see as well. The only other use for Soul Runes really in the game is Stunning for Stun Elk. 
and maybe a couple, I think there's like one or two um, teleports on the um, ancient spell book, I, I can't think right now, the ancient spell book um, that uses a small amount, but yeah, not a huge use for souls right now, so that'll be good to see as well. Another thing we'll be seeing is the, um, if any of you guys remember from way back in RS3 or RS whatever it was back then, um, you had the bank in the uh, cooking guild if you did the hard Varrock task, that's going to be added in, so that's really cool. You have the bank and then the range like two steps away from it, so that'll be a nice place to do cooking. Um, I think the Rogue's Den would still be slightly faster if you have the uh, Emerald Benedict right next to the fire because, I mean, the range was like one or two steps away from the bank, but it's a lot more convenient and you don't have to worry about the people standing on the fire and the Emerald Benedict moving and stuff like that, so that'll be nice. And also ranges have a higher success rate of cooking if you don't have a high enough cooking level to have a 100% success rate for cooking certain types of fish, so that's really cool. I always like that little room. Um, they reduced the Marks of Grace boost in Arduin Diary from 50% to 25%. That's another thing that I had listed as kind of overpowered. 50% increase to Marks is kind of a lot, so 25% I think is better. Um, it'll bring a little bit more amylase into the game, but that's not really too bad of a thing because um, it is kind of difficult to get amylase right now, and it is a really good way to train your Herblore, but it's just kind of hard to get a huge supply of amylase. Um, GG to me since I'm already done with agility, but maybe I'll do like higher agility in the future, I don't really know. Maybe sometime I'll go for 20 mil all skills or something like that. Um, but what else do we have? Um, they specified a little bit more about the Crystal Halberd. Um, it will be the same as other crystal equipment, so it'll be degradable, and it won't have any special attack, so it's just the stats listed. It's plus 118 strength. I forget the stab and, uh, stab and slash, I think it is, but yeah, it'll probably be a pretty good weapon for certain situations. I think it'll be really good for fight caves, fight caves if you're not uh, completely comfortable with close range meleeing in the fight caves because you could use it to kill um, the Jad and the uh, Ket Zex, I think they are, the mages, without having to worry about taking any melee damage or anything like that or having to run back and forth and stuff like that. That's what I, I actually did back in the day with my fire cape as I used a dragon halberd, but crystal halberd, crystal halberd will be even more powerful. Um, Another cool thing in the Wilderness Rewards, you'll be able to select what um, Wilderness Obelisk teleport you want to do. I don't know what level that will uh, be added to, but yeah, that'll be really cool. So you don't have to just wait until you get the right one. You can actually choose which one you want to go to. And also faster Dark, crib, dark Crab fishing. Um, I think that's pretty important because Dark Crabs are basically dead content as far as fishing. I think the only ones that come into the game are from uh, drops from Wilderness bosses. So that was kind of broken really and just uh, dead content being revived, hopefully. Which will be nice, because I think that they should be pretty decent XP. I mean, they should be faster than sharks, in my opinion. They should be pretty decent if they're going to be wilderness, because wilderness is supposed to be high risk, high reward. So, I think they should be pretty good. Maybe like at least 30, 40k an hour, something like that. I don't really know. But, yeah, that would be pretty cool to see. They removed the double speed cannonball smithing for Mauritania rewards. Um, I was not completely opposed to this, because cannonballs are horribly slow. Um, and it would be, be more of an incentive for more people to make cannonballs... Um, which would drive down the price of cannonballs a bit, but I'll be fine with that since um, I'm not going to be making them, but at the same time it's kind of unfair to say that, so I think it's fine um, The people that do cannonballs right now. I mean the thing is if you were to do it I doubt they would drop by half in price so that it would still be better profit and just more cannonballs in the game, but um, I'm not really too partial either way. I mean it's, it's fine. I don't think it's I mean cannonballs have always been the way they are and they've always been like 200 250 each so they probably will stay about the same amount, and I don't know how big of a difference it would have anyways. Um, they changed double runes from Barrow's Chest, just 50% more runes, I think that's a little bit more balanced. One that's really interesting actually is a Bone Crusher from Mauritania tasks, and um, it's powered by Ecto Tokens, so you'll need to use Ecto Tokens on it or something to be able to have it be in effect. They didn't specify how many Ecto Tokens you'll have to use for how many bones it'll crush or whatever. But that will actually be really cool to have that for Slayer and everything. I'd be curious to see how much prayer XP you would actually get from doing 99 Slayer, but um, I probably will test that out actually because um, I still have 80, 80 to 99 Slayer to do, so I have like 11 mil Slayer to go. Um, so I definitely will use a Bone Crusher for that as long as it's like efficient to do and doesn't take a whole shit ton of um, doing Ectofuntus to actually be able to do it. So that would definitely be cool to see. I mean, you probably would be getting like 500k plus prayer XP just from doing 99 Slayer. 
I don't exactly know, but probably somewhere in that region, which is actually pretty decent, saves you a little bit of money, and just puts more of your drops to use, really, which is always cool. I always kind of liked the Bone Crusher and Herbicide also would be cool to see as well. Um, what else do we have? Um, they are talking about actually adding a Achievement Diary Cape, and that will be... Um, I'm assuming it would probably just be a skill cape, but with the green, like look like quest cape, but green. Personally, I would kind of like to see it a different style than the skill capes, because it basically is going to be the closest thing to a max cape until we actually have a max cape, because it's a way to show off that you have a ton of high skills, because obviously you have to complete all of the achievement diaries to be able to wheel or to wear it. Um, but they did say that it'll trim the quest cape, and it will be um, just a cool cape to show off all of your uh, diaries finished. Um, but that will be pulled separately from um, the regular diary rewards, so um, if people don't want that but they do want diary rewards or vice versa, well, you have to have diaries to have um, the cape, I guess, but that will be pulled separately, so if people don't want that then they won't get it. Um, but I personally will definitely vote yes for that, I think it will be really cool to be able to show that off. Um, and anything else that I have written down that's really significant, there's lots of other things, so make sure to check the description for a link to the dev blog and you can see everything that's been done. I'm just sort of going over the more significant things. Um, free access to the hardwood grove with Karamja Lee, that's going to be just convenient. Trading sticks aren't that expensive, but you know, convenience is always nice. Um, let's see, what else do we have? I think that's most of the really significant stuff that we have as far as um, changing really serious things and adding good things, removing not so good things. So. Overall, I'm 100% happy with it with achievement diaries. I don't think there's anything that I'm really too bothered about. XP lamps are the only thing that I'm a little bit bothered about, but I'm really not too worried about it. Um, just records kind of suck for people that go for records, but I don't go for records anyways, so I um, guess I don't have to worry too much personally. But this is my opinions on the most recent dev blog, and I'm really looking forward to achievement diaries. I'm currently planning to do um, like 85 to 90 smithing, since 90 smithing is a confirmed requirement for. Um, doing the wilderness task, you need to be able to make a rune scimitar in the wilderness. And I'll also be working on um, 91 thieving, since that will probably be a requirement for desert tasks. And I'm going to do 85 slayers, since you probably will need 90 for dark beasts, and I can boost that with the wild pie. And then I'm probably going to do some herb lore and some crafting, because it's likely that 90 herb lore will be a requirement, so at least 85, and possibly higher crafting. So those are my plans as far as working on requirements. And also, one other thing that's kind of interesting is that... Um, Summoning Hexes sent me over to a um, post by John C. in the forums where he said that it's possible that there will be requirements such as um, Chompy Kills and, um, let's see what else was it, Chompy Kills getting level 5 in each roll at Barbarian Assault and maybe getting the Master White Knight rank which is killing like 1300 Black Knights. Um, currently I have Chompies done but I don't have maxed Barb Assault rolls or the... <clears throat> the Master White Knight rank, but I've done those before on the other game for trim requirements, and I would gladly do them again, because they were kind of fun to do, but he didn't say they were definitely um, requirements, but he said it's possible, so if you want to be on the safe side, get those done. I probably will do Barb Assault sometime soon. If I have nothing else to do, I might just get the rolls maxed. It would take between probably like three and five hours to max all rolls if I had good teams, so that wouldn't take too long at all, and it would be really fun, because it's probably my favorite mini game all time and killing black knights you just go down to um, go to the area in the Taverly dungeon probably and bring a cannon probably get 1300 killed within you know like five hours or so I don't know exactly but probably wouldn't take too long and you could get that done pretty easily um, but yeah lots of interesting stuff and I am looking forward to having these out in the game and getting all these done as soon as I possibly can I have quests done which is a big advantage to me and I mostly just have to get my skills up in a few areas and possibly a, a few other miscellaneous things but hopefully a few more uh, re requirements will be released here and there and we'll be able to see a little bit more specifically what we're going to need to do but I think that's it for this video guys thanks for watching and um, Make sure to leave any feedback you have in the comment section below, and hopefully this video came across as a little bit less um, disagreeable than the last one, whatever was wrong with that. Uh, definitely let me know what you... Oh, fuck! Did not mean to do that. I usually actually do those because you can get like 1.2k Slayer. Well, GG. But anyways, I'll see you guys soon with a new video, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you later.